Thank you. Um, getting students back to in-person learning um, is long overdue, and I've received hundreds of comments and um, really stories from parents and teachers in my district, and I'm glad that we're having this conversation because it is getting us a step closer to opening our schools for in-person learning. I'm gonna revisit the testing cadence because it is um, important for my district. Or In my district, I have some schools that have been operating on, under a waiver since fall, some schools who were frustrated because their approved waivers, um, which they didn't activate because of the surge, were then pulled um, because of the January, January 28th or 24th um, guideline changes. So there's already frustration. What I don't want to happen is for our schools that are already open to run into problems again um, that are gonna create more complications for them. Part of um, um, what my question is around is the testing cadence. Can you just explain again what schools have to adopt, have to utilize the testing cadence regimen? Uh, yes, Assemblywoman. So the, um, the testing cadences that are part of the CDPH guidelines would be required for school districts that do not currently already have an adopted plan to reopen. So the grandfathering clause that I referred to earlier is intended to and, and legally would protect a school district that already has an adopted plan, even if they have not yet been able to implement because of the, the tier that they are in and it was unsafe to open. So this plan is a lot more complicated, especially for our seven through 12 schools. Um, is there, and on top of the tiers, um, so for high schools, for seven through 12, unlike elementary schools, when tiers, when cases get to 25 per 100, they can, they can open. Now for high schools, it's seven per 100. Um, I, I think we need to take a serious look at this our high school students are committing suicide. And I think it's something that we seriously need to consider is making it easier and less complicated for our high schools and junior highs to open as well. My next question is, um, is there, in the language that exists for in-person learning, what does in-person learning mean? Is there a minimum, does that mean that you know, a school could only be, you know, have in-person learning an hour a week, or, or, or it's kind of, I, I don't see any clarity in that, what that means. Yes, so there are uh, definitions in the uh, current law that are not changed in SB 86 around the minimum number of instructional minutes that need to be provided during this school year. So we did change that as part of the distance learning uh, model. So those minutes have not yet changed. What we do here is define in-person instruction for TK through six as being under the immediate physical supervision of a certificated employee. And then for uh, older grades, for middle school and for high school in the um, physical um, uh, space of uh, either a certificated or a classified employee to allow um, for safer cohorting of those older grades while knowing they have multiple teachers. So knowing that they may not be able to be in the physical presence of, it, of each of their teachers throughout the day. And um, the requirement that 10% of expanded learning time grant funds be spent on paraprofessional staff, my districts are concerned that it could create arbitrary and unnecessary ongoing fiscal obligations. Um, why not give districts more flexibility with that spending? So the um, intent in SB 86 is to ensure that there is an emphasis on um, the adult to student ratios that are necessary not just for public health purposes um, under the public health guidance, but also to truly address learning loss. And so that's why you see a lot of the call outs um, around tutoring and one-on-one -on -one interventions and other kinds of supplemental supports. Um, the understanding is those supplemental supports mean supplemental people who are um, able to provide those supports. So um, we actually anticipate a large majority of the learning recovery funds being utilized for certificated and classified employees. Um, there was a great number of layoffs that happened in the spring for our paraprofessionals, in particular those who provide one-on-one -on -one support for special needs students. And so we do anticipate many, many LEAs 
bringing back that staffing capacity in this next year if they're in person in order to meet the basic needs of their um, students' IEPs. Thank you.